all to International Journey. International Students Association presents you with a show about celebrating journey of these amazing graduating students. In this bi-weekly show, we will talk about their journey to America, navigating life far from being from their home and celebrating their achievements. Today we have Dishan Lee, international student from Malaysia. Please introduce yourself and tell us something about you. Hello, hello. I am Dishan. Last name is Lee. So, but most people in the U.S. call me Ethan. I just want to say I'm so happy and excited to be here, and I want to say hello to my mom. Hello, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm just happy. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm a senior in human resources management. Mm -hmm. uh, I chose this major is because my business background from my family and also I want to positively impact others. So I, it's a mix of both and HR is the best. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. that's amazing. So uh, why did you choose to come to America and especially Oswego? Well, I chose America uh, because Actually, actually, I chose Oswego is because of the lake, uh, and I am from Malaysia, which is ten thousand miles away from home, and I definitely love it here because uh, the lake over here is so much representing my my island. You know, I just want to be around the water. Mm -hmm. I chose America because I had a dream since I was fourteen years old too. Yeah. Yeah, and I when I go back home because of COVID. Right, uh, right. When it was two years ago, I was struggling a lot because of my family's financial. And actually, that actually is why I'm back here. Uh, with al also, you know, my family's help on the financial side. But I'm the youngest son in the family. So I am very, very much loved by my family. So my beautiful 50 years old mom, <laughs> yeah, my beautiful 50 years old mom, she spent her retirement fund on me just so I can be here today, pursue my education. This is more than just an education to me. This is a dream that I had since I was 14 years old. Right, right. Well, that's so amazing of your mom. Wow, I love that story already, but I know there's a lot more to come. So um, tell us more about the dream that you had. So you had two dreams. Can you talk about that? Yeah, uh, so I had two dreams. The first one being I want to be a motivational speaker mm -hmm. or a keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. And my second dream is to be in America, striving my very best. Right. And here I am today having this amazing conversation in Oswego. So can you believe it? I can't believe it. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I know you were talking a little bit before about your struggle with coming back to Oswego. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that experience and how that struggle was for you. Yeah. Uh, so what happened is that I came to Oswego with only a hundred dollars bill from my father uh, because of the financial hardship. That is why I am here back in Malaysia, uh, back in Oswego with all at my 100%, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in my work, in my study, in having fun. I just want to experience and learn everything possible. Right. And actually, uh, in order to do that, I followed my friend's footsteps and I applied for the resident assistant position, which mm. is also known as RA. Mm -hmm. And Amazingly, uh, I met my hall director at that moment during the summer. Her, his name is Carson Nadell, and actually, he ended up becoming my mentor too. So yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So you met Carson. Was it orientation that you met him, or during the RA interviews? You were saying. So yeah, I was yeah. Uh, RA, and he was my supervisor as a hall director. That's awesome. So, yes. so he took you under his wing, I assume. Yes, exactly yeah. that. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so nice. Well, tell us about your experience with being an RA. That's a really big role at SUNY Oswego. So talk Ooh, about it. Definitely. So actually, uh, being an RA is very, very underrated because this position it is actually so very rewarding and somehow it changed my life and I want to go in a little bit more into that mm -hmm. you know believe it or not coming into this position uh, I was an introvert that is 
even afraid of humans. Right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but this position really pushed me out of my boundaries and my comfort zone. So since May of last year, 2022, uh, I have met new people almost every day. And that's amazing, you know, because of my RA position, I had the opportunity to work with uh, different, so many different departments like the admission office, mm -hmm. student affairs, EOP program, yeah, and so many more. Mm -hmm. And also, I get to meet people from various backgrounds, right? Uh, and roles like students, uh, faculty members, colleagues, uh, f uh, including VP and AVP of departments in Oswego. Just, just <laughs> look at what I'm doing today, you know. Right, right. Having this opportunity in front of the TV studio <laughs> with ISA and WTOP behind all this, hosting this program and make this happen. Uh, being an RA really is a constant communicator and it opened up so many doors for me. And the best part is I get to meet with my mentor, right? <laughs> I was telling a lot about my mentor, Carson Nadell. Big credits to him. He gave me the golden key to unlock the doors to my biggest dream as a keynote speaker. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> and you know, if that's your dream, you have to keep chasing it, right? So, all right, so when we come back, we'll hear more about Eason's time here at Oswego. Stay tuned. Say, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this. Storm Team 10. Say it with me. Storm, Storm Team 10. Roll it. Jill told me it was Kitty from Glee. Yeah, what it's is it? Al Roker. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to International Journey. Here today we have Eason, who is an international student at SUNY Oswego. He is from Malaysia. So Eason, tell us, what do you love about Oswego? Ooh, Lake Ontario is definitely a game-winning attraction to me. <laughs> uh, just like I said, right, I'm from an island. I need to be surrounded by water. and uh, It's just my comfort zone and I want to be, be, uh, I want to be around there. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's also probably the super hype ice hockey games. I know we lost yesterday, but <laughs> let's go Lakers! <laughs> and also, uh, I really have fun a lot in the summer. In mm -hmm. the summer, I met so many people uh, that I really, really enjoyed and loved. Especially, going back to the same thing, my mentor again, I just need to give him so many big shout out because, you know, he taught me so very much and he guided me on the right path and I also learned so much from him so big credits to you to you Carson for sure yeah and uh, what else hmm I also learned spike ball and volleyball too 
awesome. Yeah, and it actually quickly became one of my favorite mm -hmm. sports. I, I, I just love the summer here. Yeah, mm -hmm. did you take any sunset pictures? Ooh, too many to count. <laughs> too many. Half my album is just sunset pictures. Of course. Yeah, and it's all surrounding the lake and yeah, I just love it. The summer here is really beautiful. Yeah, oh, and also what position do you play in volleyball? Because I also play volleyball. Oh yeah, I like to play setter. I'm not oh, amazing okay. at it, but you know, I want to do that. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> All right, so the next question is, mm -hmm. uh, if you got to choose again, would you choose America, New York, or Oswego? Ooh, actually, I love that question. Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking me that. Because coming to America was a dream, you know. This is the, a land of explorer, right? And I get to meet people with diverse cultural perspective, and I could pursue for any dreams. Uh, adding to that, Coming to Oswego is actually the best thing that ever happened to me, believe it or not. I love the four seasons here because <laughs> Malaysia is right. 80 degrees all year round. For Fahrenheit, it's 30 degrees all year round. So, you know, it is really warm there. And over here, there's four seasons. I like a little less on the snow. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Much <laughs> lesser on the wind though. Oh yeah. People no. in Oswego know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I love the lake here, just like I said, the variety of clubs, uh, the variety of departments to work at, the various events, the supportive communities, and especially the people I met here, like yourself. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, because the people who I met here made me who I am today. Yeah, I met people from, you know, New York City, Rochester, Long Island, Russia, Spain, Germany, Nigeria, Korea, India. That's like everyone yeah. <laughs> in different parts of the world coming mm -hmm. together in Oswego. That is why, you know, having this opportunity to having to meet and interact with them, it's so very important to me. For sure. Yeah. And even after going through two years of missing college due to COVID, I am actually super happy that all my friends stayed true to me. You know who you are. <laughs> uh, they stayed true to me until this day. Oh, right. actually, uh, yeah. that reminded me a quote from my boss. Her name is Renee Landers. Mm -hmm. She taught me a quote by the Satellite Sister, right? She said to me, uh, every, not every conversation can change your life, but any conversation can. So I do appreciate knowing such a diverse group because any conversation can change my life and I could learn so much more just by, just by being open, you know, open-minded and listen to them. For sure. Wow, that's a really nice quote. I'm going to take that with me. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to miss most about Oswego since you're a last semester senior? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I definitely gonna say it's one zone calzone. <laughs> I know everyone is thinking about it too, you know, pick up our delivery, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, I just love the one zone here. And it's, big, it's, it's a big part to a lot of our mem our, my memories, you know. And other than that, I'm gonna say it again. I will definitely miss the warm community here and fun events like campus events like ISA Diwali's, Laker Knights and all my closest friends here, you know, living, he living here, leaving them, leaving you. Yeah, Oh, Yeah, that would be probably the hardest part for me. I totally get that. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you too, though. Thank Can you add on a little bit about that? What's gonna be, what was like your favorite memory with us? Ooh, hmm, let me think. I think my favorite memory, hmm, is definitely both my birthdays here. Mm. Ah, my both my birthdays here are amazing. Uh, let me tell you about my first ones first. Uh, my first one is celebrated here was in 2019. And the second birthday that I celebrated was in last year, 2022. That's like three years gap between because of the COVID, right? Right, right. But nothing changed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the crazy part. Uh, both the times I was in my room and my friends came as a crowd and with a cake, with both times, the best part is, both times, I was also slammed with a cake <laughs> and whipped cream on my head too. 
Yeah, it, it was a huge mess, but I'm very blessed, though. That sounds like fun. <laughs> that really does. Um, I know that we've heard a lot about your time at SUNY Oswego, but I feel like we should see your time at SUNY Oswego. So can we cue some tape for that? Wow, that was a great video. I'm sure all the memories just started flooding back again. I Can you know. tell us more about some other memories that you had? I know, you know, that memory is, that is so many parts of my time in Oswego. Mm -hmm. And that really shows, you know, summarize my time in Oswego and that I've done so much in Oswego. And, you know, having fun with my friends and all is just amazing. And just now you talk about another favorite memory of mine, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely want to talk about another favorite memory of mine that was happening, that was just happened about two months ago. That was January 14, 2023. I remember so clearly about this day because it was a life-changing experience. I, I, was, a, I was an RA mm -hmm. and resident assistant. And with that opportunity, I had an uh, opportunity to present a 15-minute speech oh, yeah. Yeah, at, at a lead conference. Mm -hmm. I, with that opportunity, I get to present it to 30 leaders in the room. And that opportunity changed my life. Wow. I cannot wait to hear more about that. Um, but the next question for now is, what do you miss about home? I know we have a bunch of family members watching. So what do you miss about Malaysia? Ooh, I definitely miss my family and friends back home the very most. Yeah, all the little and big moments we have together become so very precious. Mm -hmm. You know, all these little moments, even from like, just having dinner with my friends, hiking, small little moments like that become so very clear to me. And I, I've always been thinking about that. And I've always been away from home since uh, high school. S but I know my friends back home and family back home are always there supporting me. For sure. Yeah. And, but thank God though, thank God for technology. <laughs> <laughs> so distance become easier. Mm -hmm. Distance definitely becomes easier. Uh, my family too. My family, we have been through a lot. We have been through a lot together over the past few years. But you know, even if in tough times they send me away to finish my education and pursue my dream. When I'm here, they've always been cheering me on, giving me crucial advice at the perfect timing. I'm here in Oswego in this TV studio right now Honestly, it's all because of them, of my family. I want to tell them, you know, sending me away, even in these tough times, is definitely worth it. I'm having the time of my life. I want to tell them that I'm doing well here. And thank you for doing that. I know my family is watching. So, I just want to say, I love you all. I love you all.
he said, that's going to make me cry. OK, um, that was really sweet. <laughs> when we come back, let's hear more about Eason's dream of becoming a motivational speaker. See you after the break. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Shine on that boy. Look at the bling. Look at the, do we got a diamond test drop? Yeah, that's getting bad. <laughs> yep. Ten out of connection. ten recommend on you. Yep. I'm buzzed. I spent too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm going to need that back. No. Nope. Kevin! Welcome back to International Journey. We know you talked about your dream of becoming a motivational speaker, Eason, but can you tell us more about it and that speech that you did? Wow, perfect. You know, thank you for asking that because now I get to talk about my dream and that speech too. I, I have had that dream of becoming a motivational speaker since I was 14 years old. But I never seem to share it to anyone. And the reason is because it seems so bizarre and unreachable to me. To me, it seems so far away. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm always thinking to myself, how can I, a Malaysian introverted boy, become a motivational speaker? that would inspire others. Just like Walt Disney, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he, thought, he never thought that he was going to make it. He was rejected by the newspaper editor. He was told that he lacked of imagination. Mm -hmm. He even got bankrupt too. But he kept going. And now, he holds a record for the most individual Academy Awards with 22 Oscars. Wow. That's just amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Going back to the opportunity that I had, I gave a 15-minute speech at the LEAD conference. And that changed my life. At the special moment when I finished my presentation on the topic of failure is the journey to success, I knew my life was going to change. The weeks of preparation and the result of the presentation mm -hmm. changed my mindset, my behavior, and yes, my life. I keep going to back to, that, to saying that because it really did. Yeah. Yeah. I was able to inspire a room of 30 leaders with my story and hard work. I remember very, very clearly on the exact moment after I finished my presentation. I 
bow to the audience and I, when I look up I realize some of my audience teared up some honorably gave me a standing ovation some went up to me and told me that I gave the best presentation they have ever witnessed I walk away knowing that I have also changed every audience's life just like they did to me the reason I'm telling you this is because sometimes dreams can seem so unreachable mm -hmm. until you actually reach them just like that special day right it showed me that our wildest dream are all reachable with the speech I took the first brave step of many stairs to my wildest dream and with that I would like to ask do you remember your biggest dream when you were young and when you were daring enough to dream but why did we stop the dream? That's a question. That's a question we all want to know. And we're all asking, and I'm glad you're asking that. Let's see some pictures from Eason's lead speech. That's so cool. I love those pictures, especially that last one with the selfie. <laughs> yes. So why do you think this happens? Uh, like, why do people stop having these brave dreams? Yeah. I, I did think to myself that too. I believe we stop having these limitless dreams because we are afraid. Because we saw all the potential risks. We see only we see we are only able to see the obstacles and challenges that we might need to face we only see things we can't do and that makes us afraid to take that big risk to reach that bizarre dreams that we once had and we hold ourselves back from pursuing our dreams instead of thinking about why we are unable to do this and that. Why not stop to think about why and how we are able to reach the big dreams? All it takes sometimes is just the first big step to help us realize that anything is possible. Anything. Just like I did when I took my first brave step to be a motivational speaker however my journey to my dream doesn't end here it just got started and i believe we can all go out there mm -hmm. yeah. and remember the dreams that we once had and never stop to pursue them because i believe in you and each and every one of you and that I hope to close the interview with this quote by Walt Disney. If you have the courage and determination, your dream can come true. I love that. That was such a nice last statement to say to your viewers and your friends and families back home. I love this. And I, if you just want to say goodbye to everybody that's watching. <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, I just want to say to ISA, WTOP, friends here and back home, my mentor, my family, I appreciate all of you. And thank you. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Eason. Thank you so much. Well, your amazing journey with us has been great. We will be 